Joining us now, she is the new head coach of the Maryland Terrapins, someone I've known going back to her time as the head coach in Oakland, where she had great success there. She is still constantly, as we talk, on the move, uh, mm -hmm. adjusting her new settings, but we're excited. Our, our good friend Lauren Karn, the head coach of Maryland, joins us here and in the circle. So, how are things going for you? We're busy. <laughs> um Nothing like uh, getting a new job, getting to know um, new coworkers, settling in with a staff, getting to know your team while also moving your family, um, you know, from the Midwest to the East Coast. So there's a lot of moving parts. Um, and slowly, I'm feeling like I'm getting a little bit more of a grasp on just the day to day and not feeling totally overwhelmed. <laughs> What, what has that been like for you? Because, right, it's late in the fall you know, yeah. season here. You're taking over a program. You're learning the players you have. You're learning the school. Uh, but at the same time, you have, you know, families and, and things like that. So what has that been like balancing all that out? I'm really focused on just like what my current task is. So currently my task is to complete this interview with you and not really think about anything else. But prior to this, it was um, – you know, going on a tour to see if uh, we could find a place to live. So I'm just really relying heavily on my calendar, my to-do list, and making sure that I'm just staying um, on the task at hand and not really getting sidetracked. Uh, I feel like once I get like a grip on things, if, you know, I have to put something aside to complete something that pops up, I can do that. But right now there's so many things that um, I just have to stay focused on the current task, complete it and move to that next one. <laughs> What was it about Maryland that made you make the jump? Because when we've talked in the past, you talked about how you were happy at Oakland, you had the family there, that you said it would take a special situation, a special place to get you to leave Oakland. Yeah. Obviously, Maryland, you felt is that for you. What was it about Maryland that you convinced you to say, this is the right special place for me to leave a special place that I was happy at? Yeah, so... Uh, there's a couple of pieces to that. There's a personal piece. There's a professional piece. Um, we can touch on the personal piece per first. Uh, all of our family, my parents, my husband's parents, our siblings are all on the East Coast. Um, I have my my husband's sister lives in Annapolis, so she's 45 minutes away. Um, my parents are just outside of Philly, so they're about two, two and a half hours away. My husband's parents are outside of New York, so about four hours away. So just getting closer to like our um, foundational support system was huge for us. Um, and finding an opportunity that um, allowed me to grow in my career, but also um, there would be opportunities in that same area for my husband to grow in his career. Um, and we felt like this spot offers all of those things closest to family. Our our kids are able to spend a little bit more time, hopefully, with their grandparents now and their cousins and um, their aunts and uncles. So we're excited about that. And then on the professional side, which is obviously one of the bigger things, like, you know, can you win there? Can you do what you need to do? Do you have the support that you need there? All of those things kind of lined up for me um, through the interview process. And there are a lot of things that Maryland offers that are really great. And I think like when it comes to recruiting, we're going to have the resources we need to get really high quality student athletes in here. We have the support from our um, administration to do what we need to succeed. Um, they have a really good handle on like what the student athlete experience actually means and how to impact that positively, which is really important to me because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing that I do is impact the student athletes. And when we're talking to recruits and um, you know, they talk about their experience. We control their entire schedule when it comes to their collegiate life. Um, and so being able to allow them to be humans outside of softball is really important to me. And our administration here supports that as well. So that was really big for me. Um, and then competing, you know, career advancement and competing in the Big Ten. And to be completely honest, like being a part of the Big Ten um, coaching group is really exciting for me. And uh, the quality female coaches that they have in this group is huge. So I'm just excited to be a part of that as well. Was that something the Big Ten, because you mentioned obviously you coached in Oakland, you've coached in the Big Ten area. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you looked at as a dream down the road as maybe getting into the Big Ten? Or is it just one of those things, this was just the right fit, and it just so happens this is a school in the Big Ten? 
that's more or less it. Um, I am very like focused on what's mm. in front of me, uh, not like, you know, when somebody says, you know, where do you see yourself in five years? Where, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Well, I'm focused on this year. <laughs> um, and so I never really like had these big goals. I think when I first started, I had these big goals to coach at a power five school and do all of these things. And then as I got into my career, it was more like finding the right fit at whatever level that looks like. Um, and I really do feel like Maryland is the right fit for me. And it happens to be at the power five level in the big 10. I want to talk about the campus. I've been to the campus. Uh, mm -hmm. cause I've visited Maryland uh, many a times because my sister lived in Virginia now is now living in Maryland as a matter of okay. fact. So I uh, will be visiting up there. So now I have Very another nice. reason to visit. Yeah. <laughs> Stop tell <all> me, <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the campus. Because I don't think for people that may have never been there, I think people might be surprised at how gorgeous that yeah. campus in that area is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, obviously very bigger than where I'm very big compared to where I'm coming from. Um, and it's like an urban setting, but a little bit more open. So there are spots on campus that are, have like a little bit more of a city feel and then spots on campus that feel like you're maybe a little bit in the middle of nowhere, uh, which I think is really cool to kind of combine those two things. Um, buildings are beautiful. Academics are, um, awesome here and it's challenging to get in as, um, a non-athlete, also challenging to succeed as an athlete here academically, but in a good way. Um, we have all of the resources that you need to succeed. So academically, the aesthetics of the campus, we have a lot of construction going on right now because um, they're wanting to, or they're doing it, they're putting in um, a train track right through the middle of campus that can go straight to DC for kids on, on campus, maybe who have internships in DC, want to utilize their resources in DC. So just the connections that are around campus and then um, the way that campus flows is really special. Before we continue talking about Maryland, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Oakland. That's going to be mm -hmm. a special place for you. You've tremendous success there. Land with the probe to the point where whoever the person that takes over for you has got big shoes to fill because they're going to be compared to you now. When you reflect, I mean, you haven't had time, I know, reflect, but what do you want people to remember about your time at Oakland? Because you accomplished a lot of great things that helped you get to where you're at now. Just that we could compete at a high level um, and give student athletes a really good experience. And there are some things, there are some like intangibles or things that at the outside person might not know, um, specifically like recruiting and retaining student athletes who maybe could play at the next level, but didn't have a desire to get into the portal or seek that opportunity because we made sure they were taken care of and treated with respect. And, um, you know, the wins and losses are really great, but like, there are so many other things that I'm proud of, um, during my time at Oakland and it has nothing to do with the softball piece. It has more to do with like the relationships that I built with my coworkers who I know I can rely on even now, if I need something, I can call them. Um, and just the way that, I was able to see our student athletes grow into their adult self. Um, and that was something I think as an assistant, it's hard to see that. And my assistant stops were like more like a three year period. So I wasn't seeing like a full recruiting class go through. Um, but at Oakland, I was able to see full recruiting classes go through from like their freshman to their senior year and the growth that I saw. Um, and the confidence that they have as adults, like going into their careers and finding places to live and all of those things, like those are the things I'm most proud of. Um, the wins and losses are really cool. And winning championships is obviously why we're doing what we're doing. But um, the things that nobody else sees, that's what I'm most proud of. Do you have a favorite moment? Um, I guess a couple. <laughs> um. Winning the championship obviously is at the top of the list. Um, and I wasn't there with the team. So like, you know, watching them win the championship on TV um, and kind of having a moment to like reflect on that myself. Uh, I'll probably, I'll never forget that. Just like kind of sitting on my couch with my one-year-old at the time, um, pregnant with my daughter who I didn't know was coming that night. Uh, just like tearing up and then they were all FaceTiming me. So like that kind of thing is just, I'll never forget that. Um, and then celebrating with them when they got back was really cool. Um, 
And then there are a couple of other, like I said, like non uh, softball moments that um, I've watched specific student athletes maybe make a really big decision in their life or like help them through a really challenging time. And those things like come to the forefront of my mind. Well, let's expand because some in the audience might say, wait, wait, wait. She was at home watching them win the championship. What? What? Yeah. Expand for the audience <laughs> that may not be aware of the story uh, yeah. of the year and the timetable and all this because you were pregnant. So you couldn't travel at this right. point. Right. So just tell the audience of the story because you actually gave birth. Right. Well, it was like after they won the championship game. Is that correct? Just kind of explain yeah. tell the story for those that may not be aware. Yeah. So um, the championship game, I wasn't able to travel. I was 38 plus weeks pregnant um, and the championship was at Youngstown State. So wasn't able to travel. And as the team was doing well, I thought I could really Saturday morning, my husband left for his regional tournament. He was going to Tennessee. And I'm like, I could really take my one-year-old. It's only a four-hour drive, go to the game, and then we'll drive back and it'll be fine. And then the game got moved up from rain for rain. So I think it started at like 10 a.m. So I was like, well, I probably, I that's going to be a lot. I'm extremely pregnant and my one-year-old has a lot of energy, almost two-year-old. So maybe I shouldn't do that. And I should just stay here. And honestly, like, I don't want to like mess with the mojo. So I've been sitting in this spot all week watching the games. I should probably sit in this spot for this game too. Um, so I, I decided not to go. And, um, that morning, my husband was about to leave and he was like, you know, do you really think I should go on this trip? And I said, yes, I don't feel anything. And if something happens, it's going to be fine. Um, so the team wins the championship. I'm excited. I'm getting FaceTimes from them. I'm texting all of them, talking to them. And then I decide because it's like noon, I'll just go on a walk with my son. And um, one of the alumni actually watched the game with me. Um, she came into town and she sat on the couch and watched with me. And so after that, we were like, well, we'll go on a walk and then the team will be back tonight. So I'll celebrate with them. Um, met them at campus around like 6 30 or 7 to you know hoist the trophy with them and give them all really big hugs and talk to them they were like did you see this and you probably couldn't see this on tv but this was happening and that was really cool to just like number one see their excitement but then also just like hear the things that we would be talking about in the dugout if I was there um and so I felt some like cramping but I didn't know if anything was starting and I and I remember after all of the girls left my trainer and my staff, we were all standing there and they were like, you're not feeling anything. And I said, well, I'm feeling some cramping, but I mean, you never know that could last weeks. Um, and then by about nine 30, I texted my husband and said, did you get to Tennessee yet? And he said, yeah. And I said, I think Sophie's coming. And he was like, are you kidding? <laughs> um, so I called my next door neighbor. I called at the time, my assistant, Sam, cause she was going to um, stay over my house to take care of my one-year-old if I went into labor while my husband was out of town. And sure enough, that was happening. So I think I got to the hospital by 1130 and she was born at 1230 in the morning. Wow. And this was what, 2022? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Because I think you and I talked about this. Yes. When we had you on the show last time, I don't remember if it was on the year or off the year, because I remember you were about, you were making this bus trip to Florida because you yep. played in the UCF tournament. Yeah. Uh, and I remember like, wait, when are you do? And you told me like, wait, how are you, how are you going to figure this? Are you going to make this work? And you kind of gave me some of the options you, you were discussing, but that's, yep. that's, that is wild. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> My husband didn't make it. Um, he, did and then not, I just, he did not make it. And then I just oh. told him like, stay at regionals because you never know when you're going to get a regional experience again. Um, and he was fortunate enough to get it again in 2023. But I, I said, you know, stay there. You can't really help me with anything currently. Uh, <laughs> I'm the only one who can take care of the baby. So you go do your thing and try to win regionals. And then um, he, he made it back home on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we all got in the car with a four day old and drove to Chicago to be at the Northwestern Regional with my team. I was going to expand on that because, right, you got sent to Northwestern mm -hmm. uh, as a four seed. Mm -hmm. So my question is, did were you able to join your team for a selection watch party? Uh, I don't no. or no. I was no because um, I was still in the hospital with Sophie. So oh, wow, she, she was born like 
I guess technically on selection Sunday, 1230 in the morning. Um, and the selection show was later that night. So I was still in the hospital watching from the hospital, trying to work on like, you know, booking buses and flights and the nurses who are coming in and checking on us are, I'm like, I'm really sorry. I need to take this call. I'm like still doing work. And they were like, what do you do for work that you're still doing work? Um, and I was like, well, there are a couple of things I need to help my staff with as far as logistics. My team is going to the NCAA tournament. So I'm just going to do my best. Are you um, telling the nurses, can you put on this channel? I need to watch the selection show where we're going. Oh, I mean yeah. 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 <laughs> So what, what? That's unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Did you have doubts that you'd be a coach in the regionals or like, I mean. I, my husband and I said, like when we were looking at um, pre uh, guessing regional hosts and all of that, we were like, okay, if Northwestern um, is a host, it's likely that, you know, Oakland could be sent there regionally. If that's where it is, we can go, we can make that trip. We already know we can make that trip. Um, and if it's anywhere else, like outside of a five hour, six hour radius, we probably won't be able to make that trip. Cause I wasn't sure like how Sophie would feed. Um, thankfully at that point in time, that's when babies just like sleep all the time. They fake you out for like a week and then they start like crying and like you have all your struggles. But that first week is a little bit like, of a fake out um, because she hated the car after that trip for a full year. She still does not like the car seat, but that trip, she was totally fine. And I think it was like a blessing in disguise for us to be able to do that. But we did predetermine that if it was at Northwestern, we would be able to go. And if it was anywhere outside of a five or six hour radius, we wouldn't be able to make it. So I was really hoping it would be Northwestern. And when it was, um, he and I were very excited. Yeah, I projected you to go to Northwestern. So you yeah. see, it would have just followed my bracketology. Yeah. You would have known right at the get-go. But that's funny, the 400 miles. That's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. That is, yeah. I remember, because I remember hearing about it, but for you to he tell the story again, moving, I mean, that's kind of wild. Yeah. When you think back, I mean, that is a, uh, that's like a, I, you're going to be sharing that story in the family for a long time. <laughs> yes, we certainly will. There were things, um, because, Sam, my assistant at the time who was helping me, um, and she was staying at my house while my husband was out of town. She also had to work like for the team. So she was trying to help book buses and flights and, um, she was going to practices. I couldn't go to practices. So I was home with the two kids, a newborn and my son who wasn't turning to just yet, um, trying to do all of these things. And like, he found a vat of Vaseline that he decided to rub all over the ottoman and he was pretending to vacuum his goldfish, but it was really just like running them over with his walker. Oh, uh, and I was like, you know what? Some things you just have to let go of when it comes to kids. And that was one of them. Yeah, for sure. That's uh that's incredible. Um, yeah. but what it shows is you've had unique situations that you've yeah. had to hand uh, deal with. Mm -hmm. and handle it very well and this kind of in a weird way is similar from the standpoint of not the most ideal situation but you're taking over a program kind of late here in the fall yeah. so i'm curious a what was your message to the players when you were introduced to them and you got to uh, talk to them for the first time what was the message the message was um kind of explaining who i am at my core so like kind and empathetic open-minded. The way that I'm talking to you is the way that I'm going to coach you, but I'm, I'm going to try to work to get you out of your comfort zone to make you a better softball player. Um, I'm going to care about you off the field. Um, and we want to win. That's at the end of the day, we're not going to win every game, but we want to find ways to win at bats, win defensive innings, um, win overall the inning, winning, win the entire game. And when we fall short, what can we do to win? Um, staying focused on, you know, pushing forward. Um, and then I just told them, you know, like me accepting this job is me choosing this team. So I know a lot of student athletes um, have initial concerns, maybe when somebody takes over that they're not theirs because they didn't recruit them, but I chose them. So they are mine. <laughs> and I wanted to make that message clear to them. So they knew right from the beginning that we were going to work together. How do you learn your roster, uh, considering here we are at the end of September, you're at the beginning here of learning them. 
Is there? I don't think you could skip steps uh, necessarily, but right. how do you kind of, exp, you know, expedite that process where they learn you and you learn them? We're still kind of in that process because we don't have our staff fully um, settled. But I think the biggest thing is like, number one, I've just allowed them to play softball. And the first couple of days of practice, it was like, okay, let's see what we look like offensively. Let's see what we look like defensively. Let's see what we look like on the mound. Um, and we're not really like, we started this week, we started to implement a little bit more on the defensive side um, as far as uh, structure, goals, you know, the way that we're going to approach balls, the way that we're going to approach our defensive mindset, that type of thing. Um, but the last two weeks, I guess it's been, um, which has really been like six days because I'm like flying back and forth has been like, how do we move? How do we communicate? Um, and where can we grow and teach them? Or what's like the most important thing we want to teach them first. Um, so we can start implementing that now. The unique thing about our fall schedule or, and the way that it lays out is um, we go pretty deep into the fall, like to October 21st. That's our last fall game right now. And um, I always find that when like the fall season is stretched out, I am so eager to get to that portion of the season where we're doing a little bit more like one-on-one, -on -one, breaking things down, getting to know each other. Um, and we haven't done a ton of that. And so I'm looking forward to getting to that point, but we're still like a month away from that point. Um, so just trying to get them to communicate the way that we want them to communicate um, and be as aggressive as possible. And then we can kind of work on those other areas as we're getting more into like one-on-one -on -one, um, instruction. How important is patience going to be in this process? I think it's important all the time. Um, I think it's important every year, just maybe different ways, depending on the year. And for like myself and my staff, I think the patience piece is going to be huge because we're going to be teaching them a lot of stuff and maybe a lot of things that they've never even thought about. Um, something as simple as like changing maybe what we do on cuts and relays. And it's not that simple. I shouldn't say simple. Um, ch changing what we do like on cuts and relays to make it more efficient and put the ball in the hands of like our best defenders. Um are the people with our the quickest fee, quickest transfers, those type of things. So we're going to be asking them to do things that they haven't thought about. And that takes time. Um, so I'm reminding myself and I'm also reminding um, my assistant who just started this week and will remind our assistant who hopefully starts in the beginning of October. We don't have that one set yet. Um, it's, uh, it, this might take, they might not understand some of these concepts or they might not be able to just do them innately until April um, because they've done something for so long a certain way and we're asking them to change their thought process around it. Um, and then I think reminding them to have patience is really important too because it's the same thing. They're going to get frustrated. They're going to want to figure it out right away, but that's not the way this is going to work. So um, making sure that we're all like staying together on the same page and reminding each other to stay patient. Like, okay, I'm getting it. Or I thought about it there, but I didn't do it. So like the next step to that process is we actually execute it. Um, so patience is huge, but I think that happens every year, especially depending on how many newcomers you add. For those that didn't follow you at Oakland, describe your coaching style, your mm -hmm. philosophy. Um, Coaching style is collaborative um, as a staff with um, our support staff and with our student athletes. So it's important for me, for our student athletes to be a, a, an active participant in their success and their failures um, so they can own that. They aren't robots. Um, so we want to make sure that we're teaching them how to be the best they can be efficiently within the way that the, their body moves and the way that their mind works. Um, and they're all different in that way. And so having like open conversations is really important to me. How does this feel? If it doesn't feel right, let's find another way to do it for you. Um, maybe that's not the way that it's your body wants to do it. So we need to go a completely other direction. Let us do some research and we'll come back to that thought. Um, so really collaborative and supportive, um, 
I think like the foundation of student athletes being successful is believing that they can be successful and they, they need that support, um, as they, there's a lot of trial and error and trial and error in a lot of things that we do. They need the support to know, like, I can keep failing as long as I keep learning. Um, and my coaches will support me through that. And they believe that I can figure that out. And maybe like it's for a sophomore who doesn't figure it out until next year. Um, but that's our goal is to keep working to figure it out. Um, and then coaching philosophy, kind of a, a similar thing, like in games, um, we want to be as aggressive as possible on defense. We want to make, get lead outs when we can. We want to, um, get any out that we can. We want to make sure that the out is the priority. And then if we don't make an out on a play, is there another way we can get an out after that play? Um, can we, you know, force some things to happen on defense, um, that maybe, you know, catching a base runner off guard or paying attention on back picks, those types of things to create outs where maybe they weren't created before for us. Um, on the mound, just aggressive at attacking the strike zone and trusting our stuff. Um, and with that comes like having success in certain pitches. So we'll be talking a lot about that. And then offensively, we're built for speed. Um, so utilizing that speed, making sure we're moving our speedy people onto scoring position. And then our people um, who are in the lineup for, you know, those RBIs are able to execute and feel confident enough to execute to push those runs across. I was going to mention, how important is it as you study the roster? Mm -hmm. How much do you go back to last year, maybe, and watch some tape? How much of it is, I just want to see it with my own eyes? and maybe be able to adapt to what you have, what you're inheriting. You know, it may not be something that necessarily fits what you like to do, but for this particular group, we just adapt to what that strength is. I think, I think that's really important. I we've watched some film. Um, the unique thing about our group right now is we have 10 returners and 10 newcomers. So we're like split right down the middle. Um, and some of those newcomers are transfers, so they still have playing experience at another school, but um, their experience at Maryland is brand new. So they're all kind of in the same boat right now, as far as like the upperclassmen don't really know exactly what to expect. And they don't know me well enough to be like, just trust coach Lauren. She'll take care of you. It's going to be okay. They're like, I think we can trust her. <laughs> um, so it's a combination of those things and making sure that like we as a staff are adapting to our personnel um, and we're not pigeonholing ourselves. Like, you know, if we have this like power hitting philosophy and we're not built to hit for power, well, then we need to adapt to what we're built for. Um, and I'm not saying that that is our philosophy because I think that's important every year. Every year you're kind of, um, you might look a little bit different depending on who you bring in, who contributes right away, who's learning and contributing later in their career. And um, as student athletes advance through their career, are they um, picking up new skills? Are they adapting themselves? Or are they just staying like the same type of offensive player that they've been the whole time? And how do you make all of that work and, and score runs? No doubt. You mentioned obviously your staff, you're finalizing your staff. And you've kind of given some hints there on the timetable and all that. Once it's all finalized, mm -hmm. what do you envision the staff to bring to the table? And then more, because obviously at Maryland, you're going to have a lot more uh, options, you know, that, yeah. that you had, for example, at Oakland for various mm -hmm. reasons. Obviously, the Big Ten speaks for itself, the school itself, budgets, et cetera. What yeah. do you envision as far as the program? And then what what's your style? Are you going to be delegating a lot more? Do you what and what will you be running? Yeah. So I'll work directly with the pitchers. I'm going to oversee the whole program. And um, when I talked about like that collaboration a little bit earlier, it's going to apply to our staff also. So um, I, what I typically do is I have like what I call a defensive coordinator and an offensive coordinator. And I know it's like football terms, but it works. Um, so under the defensive coordinator there, and it's going to be um, Katie Hendershot who just started this week. Um, she's implementing the foundation of the type of defense that we want to run. And it aligns with um, like my beliefs on defense as well. So it's not like I'm not an active part of that. 
And then when we hire in the offensive coordinator position, it's a similar thing. Like they're um, implementing the offensive foundations based on philosophies that align with mine as well. Now, the defensive coordinator is um, coming up with like skill work breakdowns and things like that with the help of myself, our offensive coordinator and our third assistant. Um, and then same thing on the offensive side. So while I'll be working with the pitchers, I am also very hands-on in the defensive and offensive uh, development of our student athletes. I'm just not um, like diving in and breaking everything down for them on all areas of the game. Um, so it's a collaborative uh, setup as much I, as I think it can be. And I, I truly believe that like when we can get all of us working together on the same things moving forward, um, we're going to be efficient in running practices where we are getting things done the way that we need to and getting information to our student athletes the way that they need to. And you'll have a, a third assistant. Uh, is that, do you believe that, you yeah, that? we're working on that. Yep. Okay. That's big. I mean, that's a new thing now in the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kind of glad that came at the, the right time for you here, considering? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great just like having another person who's able to recruit, um, having another person who's able to just have coaching duties on the field. Um, it's it's a pretty big role, in my opinion. And while the funding of it looks different everywhere, um, it's I think it's going to be really important for all of the programs in the country to have it, but um, important for our growth here. Big Ten, you mentioned, obviously, you've played Northwestern in the postseason. You're probably familiar with some of the schools in the Big in the, in the Big Ten, either because you've played them in midweeks or postseason, et cetera. Uh, I know that's like the furthest thing from your mind, but Big Ten's a strong league. It's going to get bigger in mm -hmm. the coming years. What's your thoughts here? Is, is, you know, you're going to be competing at a very high level in the Big Ten yeah. with big exposure with mm -hmm. the Big Ten network and et cetera. Yeah, I, I'm excited for all of that. Um, it's going to be a really big challenge. And, you know, a lot of people might be looking at our roster thinking, okay, a lot of their contributors left, graduated, whatever the case may be. Um, so how will they compete at as high of a level as they competed last year? And ultimately, like we are who we are. And that's our goal is to compete at a high level, no matter what we're doing. So that's what we're trying to teach our student athletes, whether they're freshmen or seniors, graduate uh, student athletes, whatever that looks like. Um, the expansion of the, the conference going into next year is extremely exciting. And I think it's just, I've been on some like rankings committees and just talking about, you know, RPI, strength of schedule, conference strength of schedule, like all of that for Big Ten teams is going to be huge. And it's going to grow the whole conference. Um, it's going to impact the whole conference. And what we want to make sure is that, you know, the middle or bottom of the conference conference is still like trending up to follow what the top of the conference is doing. Um, again, the goal is to always win, but there will be some challenges along the way. And I think there will be a little bit of an adjustment in uh, maybe the type of student athlete that we recruit here to be able to compete at that level in the conference consistently. It's a program that's hosted a regional in the past and it's history. Mm -hmm. Like there's a history there of softball that maybe some people are not aware of yes. uh, with the success. Is that something too that you uh, would remind people and recruits that, you know, you can win here at Maryland here. They, we, they've done this in the past. We could do this again. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. We're, we're sending that message. Um, we're sending the message of what our goals are, what our players goals are. I mean, they're out there talking about like, we're, we're getting to a regional. Um, that's our goal. Like we're playing in the NCAA tournament and it's an attainable goal if we're doing all the things that we need to do. And then we can execute those things on game day. And for some of the returners, some of the returners, they got a taste of that Mm -hmm. last year where they were in the top 25 they had some marquee wins they were in the mix for the ncaa tournament didn't make it at right the end. i'm wondering do you expect some of the veterans there that are returners maybe kind of be the leaders and, and kind of have that like taste in their mouth like we were this close you know and, and buy in and help the others buy it yes that's kind of where we are right now um and specifically with um our senior pitcher courtney she's like 
she's getting to that next level and she's reminding everyone around her that that's where we need to be, which is really good. Um, when that comes from within and not just from the coaching staff, that definitely helps bring everyone to a higher level in just um, the way that they prepare, the way that they approach practices, the way that they approach game day, all of that stuff. When you get to talk about it, get to February and, and from the work you're going to have to do from now to February. What are some of the things you think are, are going to be key in, ingredients to make sure, like, hey, you know, we got to make sure, like, there's a lot of stuff to cover. We may not cover everything by February. Without, like you've mentioned earlier, there might be things you're going to learn during the season. Right. What are a couple of things that you're like, we got to make sure we have this pretty much taken care of or learned about by February? What is that? Um, The winning mentality at everything. And so when we're in practice um we're approaching the practice to win not approaching the practice to practice uh and right now and that this has been an adjustment i feel like on every team that i've coached and then every newcomer has to adjust to that um practice is your opportunity to work on your skills to get better to feel prepared for game day if your mentality is completely different on a practice day compared to game day, you're going to feel more stressed on game day. Um, the game's going to move faster. Uh, you're going to find yourself a little unsure. And so we are trying, we will try to get them to a place where our practice speed is the same as our game speed. Um, and they don't have to be reminded to hustle to a backup position if they need to. Um, they know right away, like, that's where I'm going because we practice this so many times. Um, you know, I dive for a ball and I get right back up instead of I dive for a ball and I lay there. Or I boot a ball and I'm like, oh, and I feel bad for myself. And then I don't go hustle after it. Well, if we're talking about um, be, paying attention, making plays where there are plays, and then trying to make some plays where maybe there aren't, aren't plays, that's one of those things. Like you pick up a bobbled ball and a lead runner is rounding a bag and you fake a throw and then you create an out for yourself. Um, doing all of those things instead of focusing on the result um, is going to be really important for us. My last question. Once you get into the season and everything like that, teams, if people start watching your team, whether it be on Big Ted Network, et cetera, what's one or a couple things that you want people to see and, and take notice about your team that says, yeah, you know what? That's that's a Lauren Karn coach team. That's the Maryland softball that that's coming. What yeah. what is that? Just supporting each other, um, having fun on game day. Like that's the stage. So that's that's the funnest. Winning is fun. Um, but when you're like in the process of winning and doing all of those things and making big plays or making routine plays. All of it is a big deal. So having fun doing that um, and then just making sure that like we're focused on ourselves. Um, there are a lot of outside things that can kind of creep into game day and can creep into practice. So trying to train our mind to really stay focused on ourselves and not what the other team's doing, what the other pitcher's doing. Um, yes, we need to talk about how are they attacking us, but then what adjustment do we make to have success against that attack? Not oh, well, she's doing X, Y, and Z. So I guess I can't do anything about it. Um, so it's all about like us making adjustments and focusing on ourselves. And I'm hoping that you'll see that. And I think in like teams past, you see that where a, a lot of different people in the lineup um, and from the bench come up in really big moments. And the entire team is celebrating those moments because everybody's been prepared for it and everybody has the same goal. Well, we're excited to see you there. Uh, I'm excited to see you there uh, wearing the Maryland colors. Uh, Thank you. Uh, congrats. I know it's a hectic time, literally. Yeah. It's a hectic time. You're <laughs> like in the process of moving, families and everything. Yeah. So the, fa uh, the fact you took time to talk to us means a lot to me, uh, considering uh, good luck. We'll be following you, you very closely. And uh, thanks for uh, coming on with us. Awesome. Thank you, Eric.